Hey guys, I'm Mark. Today I'm going to show you how I made this black walnut hallway table with some built-in piano bench style storage. Let's get to it. This project was interesting because I had to build it in secret. It was a surprise for my wife, and she tends to monitor my social media stuff pretty closely. So I couldn't share any of the pictures of it until after the big reveal. The motivation for this actually starts with a big, ugly particle board changing table. Somehow, Katie manages to hit her elbow on the changing table in the bathroom most mornings, and that thing has pretty much become her nemesis. Well, this week, she took her kids on a trip to visit her parents, and I decided it was the perfect time to earn some brownie points. Our youngest kid is just about ready to start potty training, and I didn't want to build a dedicated changing table that would be obsolete in a few months. So I decided to make this thing nice enough that when it was no longer supporting diapers and wiggly naked kids, it would be classy enough to move into the living room and use as a functional piece of furniture. Since getting rid of the old changing table meant sacrificing a bunch of storage space, I decided to build a little storage into this one. I figured this was going to end up a lot like a long-legged piano bench, so I decided that style of storage would be appropriate and easy to do. After squaring and flattening all of the black walnut, I started by gluing the biggest pieces together to make the tabletop. I put a few dowels in, mostly to help with the alignment, more so than any need for added strength. With the top set aside to dry, I sized up the legs, squared off one end of each, then clamped them together on my crosscut sled so I could cut them all to the exact same length. Next came a really fun part. I had never used a tapering jig before this point, so I was a bit timid and tried to overanalyze the whole procedure. Well, a while back, Rockler Woodworking sent me their version of a tapering sled, and it was outstanding. Once I wrapped my brain around just how simple it was, I was able to add identical tapers to two perpendicular faces of each leg in no time at all. It was actually so much fun that I've already been trying to think of other things I could add tapers to. Speaking of Rockler, this whole project was made possible because of their support. You should definitely take note of all the different Rockler products I used in this project, and if you need any for yourselves, I'll leave a link in the description so you can find them. Thanks, Rockler! Moving on to the aprons, I left the boards at their full length and cut a rabbit into them, one kerf at a time, by making a cut, bumping the fence over, then making another pass. Once I got close to the right size, I tested the fit of the bottom using a small scrap until it would slide in easily, but didn't have much play. I taped the boards together so they would be identical and squared off an end. Then, I shifted them down and cut the short aprons first. I flipped the boards end for end, then cut the long aprons to their final length. Now we get to see how this project will come together. The aprons will be joined to the legs with a loose tenon, and a bottom will slide into the rabbit before all the pieces are glued together. I took great care in marking each joint because I didn't want to get any of the parts confused, which I figured was a real possibility. I marked out the location for the piano hinge, then started to make a shallow recess for it with a router. This didn't work out as well as I'd hoped, so off-camera I ended up using my table saw to clean it up by putting the apron up against the fence, raising the blade up through it, then pushing it through, stopping just short of the end. I just had to square off two small corners with a chisel after that. I set up a corner stop and a clamp in my T-Track table to help me hold everything in perfect alignment while I figured out the locations for the loose tenons. While setting things up, I had a thin piece of scrap underneath the apron so that the front faces of the leg and the apron would be offset just a little bit. I used the Beadlock Pro joinery system to create mortises in this project, and it's a little beyond the scope of this video to show exactly how to set that jig up. If you would like a follow-up video with more information and instructions on using the jig, let me know in the comments. In simple terms, you clamp the jig to the workpiece and drill three holes. Then, you slide the guide block over and drill two more holes that fall directly in between the first three, creating one large, wavy hole. Then, you use the Beadlock tenon stock to slide into these holes and create a surprisingly strong joint. What made this more complicated for me was that my legs weren't all that thick, and the mortises would run into each other inside the leg if I had referenced each side from the same position. To solve this, I just staggered them. Long aprons had mortises that favored the bottom, and short aprons favored the top. Before starting the glue up, I needed to get the bottom pieces in order. I cut my thin walnut stock into pieces that would span the distance between rabbits with the grain running in the short direction. Don't ask me for a logical reason for this, because I haven't got one. I just got it in my head that I wanted to try it this way, so here we go. I used my bandsaw to cut corners out that would fit just around the legs. I considered continuing the rabbit through the legs instead, but I thought that would take away some of their strength. I test fit the pieces into the rabbits and quickly decided two things. They couldn't just sit like this because I didn't want gaps between them, and at only 3 eighths of an inch thick, I didn't feel like trying to glue them together, so I opted for some shiplap joints. With the straight bit in the router at a height of half the thickness of the boards, I ran one edge through, then flipped it over and did the same to the other edge. This left me with tabs that overlapped each other, a bit like a right-angled yin and yang. This way, there wouldn't be any gaps passing all the way through the bottom. I also left them just sloppy enough that any expansion would just snug up the fit, instead of trying to split the table apart. After another test fit, I could mark the location of the corners on the opposite end and cut them out too. 
I sanded everything to 220 grit prior to assembly so I didn't have to later on. I did the final assembly in several stages to avoid having to race the drying glue. Starting with the short aprons, I glued tannin stock into the legs, then spread glue on the apron face and inside the mortises. Then I just slid the parts together like a beginner level jigsaw puzzle and added some clamps. I used a wet rag to clean up any glue that squeezed out and found that using the bladed end of a glue brush helped me get deep into the corners. While the legs were drying, I pulled the tabletop out of the clamps and ran it through my drum sander to flatten out the seam. With a capacity of 16 to 32, that means this cantilever style drum sander can cover 16 inches in a single pass, then you can flip your board around and get the other 16 in a second pass. This comes in really handy since my planer only handles up to 12 inch boards. With the top flat, I used my crosscut sled to square one end, then cut it to final length. And here I have to admit I started having some technical difficulties with my camera that I've since traced back to a faulty memory card. So if you feel like I'm missing some footage, you're probably right, and I apologize. I wanted a thick, solid top, but it seemed too bulky and didn't fit the style of the rest of the table. So I used my router and added a bevel on the underside of the tabletop. This allowed me to keep the heft I wanted, but made it look slimmer overall. Off camera, I glued the long aprons onto one of the leg assemblies. Once that dried, I slid the bottom pieces in, slathered glue on the opposite legs, and used long clamps to pull it all together, trapping the free-floating bottom inside. Once again, I washed off any glue squeeze out so I didn't have to sand it out later. With everything dry, I tested the lid on top, and it didn't quite sit flat. The aprons came slightly out of alignment with this leg, so I used a hand plane to shave them down a little bit at a time until the lid quit rocking. I put the piano hinge in place on the rear apron and locked it down using just a few of the screws after drilling pilot holes. Then, I put the base upside down on the lid and centered it up. After marking where the outside corners of the hinge belonged, I removed it from the base and attached it to the top with a few screws. This introduces a minor problem that I was expecting at this point. When I went to attach the two components that should be perfectly aligned through the hinge, the holes didn't match up. This is due to the back corners of the rear legs interfering with the range of motion between the base and the top. I used my sharpest chisel and shaved those corners down a little at a time, checking the fit frequently to see if the holes lined up yet, so I didn't take off any more material than I had to. Once it was right, I attached the hinge to both pieces and got to test it out for the first time. With no rocking between the top and the base, no wiggle between the legs and the floor, and a smooth action to the hinge, I was a happy camper. I took the hinge off one last time and applied finish to every surface. I put on two coats of satin polyurethane and sanded lightly between coats. I put a third coat on the top, knowing it would see the most wear, since its first job would be as a changing table. changing table is gone and not the fun kind of dinosaur and look he won't even fall off earthquake test <laughs> <laughs> um wubs needs a bath okay. actually okay um i'm gonna go out and keep Let's unloading stop. the car <clears throat> oh that went well just grab the quick things that i need oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well were you surprised i was very surprised I had been traveling for two days and was a little road weary and I walked into the bathroom to find not only the trim done in the bathroom, <laughs> but this new streamlined uh, changing table that also looks so beautiful. Well good, I'm glad you like it. And that old one is gone forever. Thank goodness. And you don't even miss the storage. No, I really don't. With all of the changes that have happened in this house in the last year, we have downsized a lot of our stuff and have a lot of nice new storage in our hallway. Right. Anything else? No, I'm really happy with it. It really is gorgeous. And I was just telling Mark this week, having solid wood pieces in our home really makes it just look so much nicer. So, I'm very happy with it. Well, Thank good, you. I'm glad. 
And I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. I want to say thanks again to Rockliffe for sponsoring this video. And I think that's about it. So we'll see you guys next time.